We're continuing our studies of aqueous chemistry in Chapter 2, and in this lesson we'll be reviewing the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, an expression that allows us to relate pH to the strength of an acid and determine the relative proportion of an acid and its conjugate base. We find that most naturally occurring biological acids and bases are not very strong. In our last lesson, we saw that for strong acids and bases, like hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, they completely ionize. With a weak acid and base, however, there's only a partial ionization or dissociation. Let's look at the example of acetic acid, a very common biological acid, illustrated here. So we see that it partially dissociates to become acetate, and here's our H plus or hydronium ion. So then we're going to set up an equilibrium constant expression. Remember its products over reactants. Recall that we saw water itself ionizes, but very weakly, so that the concentration of unionized water was much larger. In this case also, we find that acetic acid also dissociates weakly. So the amount of the concentration of water, that is water that has not picked up a proton from acetic acid, is actually much larger. So we want to have a more meaningful measure for the strength of the acid, that is the degree to which acetic acid dissociates. So we're going to do the same thing we did last time in the expression for water. We're going to move the concentration of unionized water to the left of our expression. So here we have our actual equilibrium constant times the concentration of water and we're going to refer to that as our acid dissociation constant or Ka. So you'll notice that in this expression it's just the ionized con the concentration of the ionized form over the concentration of the unionized form. Note that in this case as the acid gets stronger more of it will dissociate and so the number in our numerator here gets larger and larger. So then as acid strength increases, so does the Ka. But we find that because it is a weak acid, that value is still a small number. So we're going to do the same thing we did with water, and instead of using the Ka, we're going to take the negative log of that value and call that the pKa, or simply the pK. So we saw in our previous slide that as acid strength increases and it dissociates more, the numerator of that expression gets larger and Ka gets larger. But since we're taking the negative log of that value, as Ka increases, pKa, or pK, decreases. So now we have a measure of the strength of the acid. As the value for pK gets smaller, acid strength increases. Keep in mind what this means. The stronger the acid, the greater the tendency to donate a proton. So if we're comparing separate molecules or separate groups that can either accept or donate protons, as the pK value of the individual groups decrease, it means that group is more likely to donate its proton. That is, it will donate its proton before one with a higher pK value. Now let's develop a relationship between pH and pK. So let's consider the dissociation of a weak monoprotic acid, that is an acid that only has one proton to donate. For this shorthand notation, HA will represent the acid, it has a proton to donate, and A- minus will be the conjugate base form of that acid, that is, it's capable of accepting a proton. So here's our simple expression, HA dissociates to form A- and H+. So our expression for Ka, again, is products over reactants, the concentration of the ionized forms over the unionized forms. Let's, uh, here, so here's our expression for Ka in the upper right. We're going to rearrange that a little bit algebraically. And now let's do that negative log thing again. So we're going to take the negative log of both sides. So now in our expression you have the negative log of the H plus concentration is equivalent to the negative log of the Ka minus the log of this ratio of HA over A minus, that is the concentration of HA over A minus. But now we can simplify this expression further because we know that the negative log of H plus is pH. The negative log of Ka is our pKa, or pK. 
Let's convert this negative log to a positive log, and in order to do that, I need to invert the numerator and denominator. So now we have an expression that relates pH and pK. This is the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. I would point out, however, that the A minus, remember, that's our conjugate base, and HA is the acid. The base is capable of accepting a proton, the acid is capable of donating it. Keep in mind, these are just different forms of the same group. Let's look at the special case, where the concentration of the ionized forms, that is the conjugate base and the acid forms, are equivalent. In that case, then, our expression for the concentration of A minus over HA becomes 1. If we take the log of 1, that becomes 0. And so now pH equals pK. So now we have a more practical definition for pK. pK is simply the pH at which half of the groups are deprotonated or ionized. So whenever the pH of a solution is equal to the pK of a molecule or group, it is one-half one conjugate base form and one-half acid form. What we find is that many groups on biological molecules can donate or accept protons. That is, they can act as acids and bases. A good example of this is an amino acid that has both an amine and a carboxyl group. This relationship between pH and pK is going to be important in many of our considerations throughout this course. In our next lesson, we want to see how pK relates to the ionization state of polyprotic acids and learn how we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to predict the protonation state for ionizable groups.